even with gyms reopening, some people aren't comfortable going back just quite yet. And a lot of my clients have been asking me if they need to keep re-upping their weights to keep progressing as we enter our six month of remote training. Now, it is totally true that the fastest and most efficient way to overload your muscles and continue to see change is through progressive weight uploading. <laughs> but uh, there's totally other ways to progress as well. So today I'm going to talk you through some ways that you can challenge yourself and keep progressing even if you don't have an endless amount of weight on hand. And we're chatting about it over some random b-roll because I literally cannot stand to look at my living room again for an entire video. So enjoy. Now just a quick little note before we start, these actually are not my opinions. This is all science, it is based in research, and I'll make sure that I leave links below, not only to my education where I learned a lot of this, but also other resources that I'm pulling from so you can just take a look for yourselves. So let's just talk quickly first about what progressive overload is. So essentially, it's very simple. It means that you're progressively, over time, adding weight and overloading your muscles so that they can tear, repair, and grow. So if we're just giving a very basic example, if you want to take a squat, so whether you're using dumbbells, a barbell, anything like that, if you are squatting with, let's say, 20 pounds, and let's say that you do that for four weeks, eventually your body's going to get used to that and it's going to stop changing and it's going to feel easier. So then you want to add weight so that your body gets challenged again and then it can continue to change or get stronger or whatever your goals are. So that's a very efficient, simple way of increasing your strength, increasing your overall performance. And my rule of thumb is like if you can do 10 to 15 clean reps, then you can progress, like you're good to go. Obviously, it depends on your goals, what type of training you're doing, but this is a really good general starting point. Now, I've talked about this in videos before, but you do want to kind of change up your programming or your phasing every four to six weeks so that you don't plateau. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, as I'm filming this, it is our six month of quarantine or at home training. So that's like a lot of four to six weeks phases here. So I've had to get really creative in how to progress my clients who don't have heavier weights. Most of the people that I'm working with, they max out at around 15 to 20 pounds. And a lot of the movement patterns that we've been working on, you know, they could go heavier with that. So if you don't have heavier weights, my favorite way to progress is through stability work. So stability work is basically increasing the proprioceptive nature of what you're doing. And I realized that that definition actually made it more confusing. So let's just back up for a second. So essentially with stability work, you are increasing how hard it is to do something by taking away how stable the client is. So really, really simple. Let's just talk about if you're doing bicep curls standing on two feet. Really great way to progress that is to stand on one foot, to kneel. Kneeling is gonna have more in core engagement, um, putting it with another exercise. So again, just thinking about things a little bit more creatively before re-upping the weight is always gonna help. Another example would be a lateral lunge. So you can totally just do a lateral lunge side to side, or you can step onto that opposite foot out of balance. If you're doing push-ups, you can elevate one hand, you can do them on a basu ball. I mean, the options are literally endless, and I love that because it gives you a lot of creative freedom here. Now, if you are a fan of isolated arm work, you know, the options totally increase. You can do alternating, you can do single side, you can do some combos, and it's a really easy way to advance yourself without adding heavier weights. And like I already said, you can also add other movements to your arm work to get some compound movement involved. So let's say you're doing bicep curls, you can add that with a squat to advance it. And this is actually the way that I prefer to train in compound movements. So compound movements, I know I've talked about this 10,000 times and you all probably know what it is, but essentially it's when you're stringing two exercises or multiple muscle groups together. And this is going to make it hopefully as total body of a movement as possible. I like working this way because it's functional, it's the way that we move in everyday life, and it's more efficient, so you're really gonna get more of like a bang for your buck as you're working out. 
And for me, I don't have a lot of free time, so I don't really have time to do split days. So this is the way that I prefer to train for myself and for my clients who are also equally busy. If I'm doing isolated work, I really do prefer using it either as a primer or a burnout. Again, I know that I've talked about this before, but always like to reiterate it. So if you're doing something to prime, you're doing it before your big compound lifts or movements, and it's really to like wake up the muscles that might be a little sleepy or might not be as active. So things like your glutes, your core, your mid and low traps, all of that good stuff to get you in proper posture and get you out of things that are hyperactive, typically in people like the hip flexors, the upper traps, the quads, all of that kind of stuff. And then if you're using it for a burnout, I do love this too, especially if I am kind of in more like a strength program with my clients. So I might do a compound movement or lift and then whatever the arm exercise that I was pairing it with, um, I will actually take that at the end and then just have them do that. So like, Let's actually give an example so you understand what I'm talking about. Let's just give the example again of a squat and curl. So I do however many reps of my squat and curl, whatever combos I want with the arms, blah, blah, blah. To burn it out with the upper body, I'm gonna stop the squat and just stick with the curl. And again, you can get super creative. Are you doing single? Are you doing alternating? Are you doing some kind of combo of both? I mean, again, the options are just limitless and I think that is like the most fun part about programming and even just working out for yourself. And then another great way to kind of change up your programming is to change from dumbbells to bands. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm learning to love bands, I will say. I'm getting creative and a lot of that has been like forced with quarantine and working with my clients in the park or remotely or wherever I've been working with them. So bands are a little bit different than dumbbells because the resistance factor is kind of flipped. So as you're lifting a dumbbell, it's heaviest at the bottom and then it gets progressively lighter or easier as you lift it up. Bands are the opposite. So bands are lighter at the bottom and then as you lift them or pull on them, the resistance is going to get heavier. So I know that that like, you know, you don't think of it as a big deal, but as far as your muscles go and how your muscles are learning and progressing, it's completely flipping it on its head. So bands are another just great way to challenge yourself and change things up. And, you know, anytime you're adding a new stimulus or a new way of moving or lifting or pushing or anything like that to your body, it's gonna change. You know, new stimulus is what's gonna help your body progress and change. And think of this like a stress. If you're putting a stress on your body, your body will eventually adapt to it. And exercise is simply another stress. So I hope that helps. I hope it gives you a little bit more creative freedom, a little bit of a relief if you don't have the heaviest dumbbells in the world at your apartment that you could be lifting. And let me know if you guys have any specific questions in the comments below. I have really found a love for programming during this time for my clients and I hope you do too. So definitely hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I know this video was a little different just like over the random B-roll that I've accumulated, but again, I just can't, I, I can't look at my apartment right now. It's all I've seen for six months. So hope you enjoyed.